My guest at this time is the current AAW World Heavyweight Champion. It is the one and only Mance Warner. Mance, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me today. Oh, thank you, man. Old Mance are out here. I got the big gold. I got me a light beer. I'm sitting here bullshitting, having a good night, man. Yeah, I got a. I have a light IPA. It's not a light. Yeah. Long as it color. tastes good, man. Long as it tastes good. I, a lot of people say, you know, old Mance is like discriminating on what beers people could drink. No, no, no. They got it all wrong. I prefer light beer. It's cheap. I don't want to spend a bunch of money, man. We don't get paid a huge amount on the indies. We got to make that money last for a long time. So I get the light beer. If you want to drink whiskey, you want vodka, you want to smoke a little something, that's that's fine, man. Just everybody chill out and have a good time. That's what it's all about. Yeah, amen, right? I mean, if you're just if you're going to be watching pro wrestling, it's a wacky thing anyway. You should need to be relaxed when you watch it, you know? True, true. So as we talk, you know, it is wacky, but it's very serious too at the same time right now in pro wrestling, man. So before we get into all this, and very excited to chat with you here about AAW Alive, but physically, mentally, how have you been holding up here during the pandemic? Oh, man, like, uh, you know, things are, we got shows going now. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, at the end of the day, I'm a pro wrestler. I, you know, I, I get paid money to go out there, get beat up, and then hopefully, let people enjoy the show, enjoy the event. They get to forget about real life shit. Not everybody's got real life shit going on. So at the end of the day, man, you know, we're doing the best we could do. I'm going out there, you know, we putting on shows, putting on events. You know, I hope everyone's safe. Everyone's doing all right. And that's, I mean, I'm holding up as much as I can. You know, we're all in pain. We're all beat up. You know, the shit goes down every day. Just try to roll with the punches. Yeah, I know you've been keeping up with shows most recently. Obviously, I saw you at GCW's Effie's Big Gay Brunch. You're on a couple other. You're on, I think, the AIW show as well. Yes. As well. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, that was a that was a big weekend, but real stripped down, man. Like 25 percent capacity. These AAW shows are only going to have 50 fans. How has that been? Like comparing, like competing in this kind of Mad Max landscape at the moment. Well, it's it's weird at first, but I think a lot of people forget they see independent pro wrestling and they see a lot of us at the level that we're at. And they're thinking, you know, all these guys are always in front of a couple, you know, 2000, 3000, you know, whatever it is, 900, whatever it may be. Sure. But I think a lot of people forget when we were all breaking in, we were wrestling in fucking barns in front of 25 people. And we were wrestling at, you know, there was one time I wrestled a show at a damn, uh, it was in the middle of a cornfield and everything in this town was shut down. I, Cause I didn't know if it was the right place or not. And I was trying to go to a gas station to ask somebody like, is this the town I need to be in? Nobody was there. They had a sign up. It was like in Texas when they got football games and everything's closed down in yeah. this town, it was like a strawberry festival or something like that. And they shut everything down. They had a big ass carnival, a fair thing going on and wrestling in the middle of it. Yeah. You know, so like we're used to wrestling in front of big, big crowds, tiny crowds in front of nobody, whatever it may be, whatever we could do to kind of give back. You know, if people want to run more more of the events where there's no crowd at all and they just, you know, people want to donate, whatever it may be, I'm for whatever people are more comfortable with. You know, at the end of the day, whatever everyone thinks is the best idea, I'm on board. Whatever anybody wants to do, man, we'll just figure out shit and be, you know, it's a learning process. Yeah, and how is it for you, man? Like, wrestlers shake hands. Wrestlers do more than shake hands. Right? Wrestlers, like, wrap each other around each other and throw each mm -hmm. other around. You know, do you, do you worry when you're out there having to 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 be around all these you know other wrestlers and things like that? I, I think we all kind of worry, but you know, for me, I remember everyone was wearing a mask. Everyone you saw backstage, for the most part, had a mask on. I can't recall many people that didn't have a mask on uh, in the crowd. Everybody, everybody had a mask on that I saw. You know, I I'm in there wrestling. You know, I'm not looking at every single person out there, so I I, I couldn't tell you if there's one guy that what didn't have one on or one lady that didn't. You know, I think we're all worried, but I mean, fuck, man, you know. Yeah, sure, yeah. We're, we're, I'm a pro wrestler, man. I ain't running for Senate. I don't know what to do to fix any of this shit. No, I, mean, I show I mean, up to, you know, so. I just, I wonder, though, because, you know, these shows are happening right now with WWE and AEW. You know, these things, these are billion-dollar entities. They have systems in place. Do you think if you're a wrestler out on the indies right now, you should be getting tested weekly? Like, what are the protocols that you're taking right now? I mean, yeah, you, you go get tested, you go do your shows, but I mean, fuck, man. It, it's one of them questions where I, I don't got an answer for it. You know, you go do your shows, you get tested. I'm good, you know, but then I don't know what everyone else does. So it's one of those things where you don't know, you know, there's shows literally every goddamn week. People are taking shows. 
Yeah. So no. it's like in, in the back of the head, you're always kind of freaked out, but it's like, fuck man, what do you, what do I do? What, you know, at the end of the day, what you, do we quit doing shows? Yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know right, yeah. I don't, I don't have the right answer. I think for that either, you know, it just is interesting to watch right now. I'm just trying to get an idea of, cause you know, I'm here safely in my apartment. I did the warrior wrestling shows, you know, like last month or whatever. And now I'm kind of just staying in my bubble again. You know, you're out in the field and this is like affecting you and stuff. I mean, even the collective, you know, it was really unfortunate because I love the collective and I interviewed a whole bunch of people going into it. But then, you know, there's this stream of, of negativity as well with these positive cases and stuff coming out of it. It's a really rough balance at the moment, you know? Yeah, it's always that thing too, man, where, you know, it's like, did people get it there? Did they get it somewhere else? Did they get it before? And then they didn't know till they, you know what I mean? So it's that thing where it's like, at the end of the day, people are going to be pissed off. People are going, it's just, it is what it is. Like there's going to be people that are pissed off. There's going to be people that ain't pissed off. There's all, you know, it's two sides to everything. Yeah. I'm just a fucking dumb pro wrestler, man. I show up and I go to towns and do what I do. And, and, you know, I, I don't have the answers, man. If I had the answers, I'd be running for fucking Senate or something out there. You know what I mean? Hey, you know what? There is time, man. If there's a voice of a reason, <laughs> and leadership that we need in this country. I think it's the Southern psychopath, Mance Warner. You know? Who knows, man? I Who knows? At least you're straightforward about it. You know, I'm a psychopath. You vote it's for It's true, man. <laughs> I go out and beat the shit out of people with weapons, man. If you're asking me to figure out how to fix shit, I, I got no answer. I don't know. <laughs> Torch it and hit it with barbed wire. Um, so uh, we'll move off the COVID stuff. I just wanted to get in your mind a little bit. It's been really buzzy. Um, so these AEW shows here. Well, first, before we get to the AEW, one last thing I want to ask about the collective. I interviewed Effie and I interviewed AJ Gray going into the collective. I'm just now getting to learn more about this, like, second gear crew, right? Oh, so yeah. This is y'all on the road. You competed as a unit at Effie's Big Gay Brunch. Talk to me about how you recall you guys all coming together and kind of a little bit of the history of this group here. Well, the way it all went down was – uh. Me and Matthew Justice, he's insane. He's a crazy man. I'm insane, too. If I'm calling somebody insane, you know they're insane. Okay. So me and him went out and had this match. And then uh, right before that matchup, before that fight, I had done another fight. And me and this guy beat the hell out of each other. And at one point, the fella asked me, like, hey, man, did I do something wrong out there? And I said, no, baby, we're just going, we're just going to the second gear. Yeah. And uh, Nick Gates heard that and got a pop out of it. But uh, Eddie Kingston then heard the story. So then Eddie Kingston went out before the GCW show and got on the live mic and told everybody, hey, when Manser comes out here, ch uh, second gear at him. I had no idea. I was out back drinking beers bullshit. I didn't know. Okay. So it was like a running joke. And then I go out to the ring and then the crowd's chanting second gear. And you can see the picture. I'm smiling like a motherfucker laughing because I thought it was just hilarious, you know. But it, it, the second gear crew basically was me, Eddie Kingston, and, and Justice. Okay. And then uh, AJ Gray got in and Effie got in and then Steve Manders got in yep. and old Manders, you know, like he's nuts too, man. That motherfucker, him and uh, him and justice, they did a DVD off the top of a damn uh, a big ass fucking scaffold to AAW through and not like a regular table, man. They found like one of them goddamn plastic tables that hurt more than anything. Oh Jesus. I saw that. So, yeah. So basically at the end of the day, man, it's a group of, a bunch of madmen who on the road, we get along, we party together, we go to all the shows together. If shit goes down, we got each other's back. It's like you're going into war, man. You want people in the trenches with you that you know ain't going to sell you out. They ain't going to fuck you over. You, so it's just, it, it kind of goes back to that old school wrestling, you know? Yeah. Do you have like a, do you have a second gear crew story that you'd like to share or you feel comfortable sharing? Is there one you think you, you can think, sh think of when you think of the group? I mean, just, it's one of them things where I couldn't pinpoint one story. That's kind of the origins of it. It's kind of where right there, but it's that thing where, uh, so me, when me and Alley Cat had that match at GCW, mm -hmm. there was a guy in the crowd who yelled out, some, he yelled out something, some derogatory bullshit at, at Alley Cat. And I, I got pissed off. So I hit the crowd and I was going to fight this motherfucker. And then I look over and the only guys running out were the SGC fellas, you know, so yeah. it's that thing where shit goes down. Those are the guys that's always got your back. You know what I mean? Yeah. They ain't gonna lie to you. They ain't gonna bullshit you. What the crowd sees, I think that's why the crowd, because we don't, we don't really go out there and like push it down anyone's throat. People just kind of know and they see and they go, oh, you know, them, them boys all row together. Yeah. That big ass pop we got at the collective when we all came out, 
against the Ohio cats out there at the GCW show. Yeah. It's like the crowd starts to catch on. We ain't playing a character. Like we are who we are. We ain't gonna lie to you. We're gonna go out here and beat the fuck out of people. And then we're gonna be at the bar drinking with y'all. And then when y'all go back to your room, we're still gonna be drinking back at our room. We ain't gonna go to bed and then go make the next show, you know? So. Man, it feels like young BSK to me. It just has mm -hmm. like BSK vibes to it. You know? I don't know. I've heard, I've heard that in uh, The Click too. More BSK but, than Click to me. The More Click, we ain't burying nobody. We ain't trying to fuck nobody yeah. over. So, well, one of the things that I think is interesting about Second Gear Crew, like you guys take the action rig to Second Gear, but also like here you are as a unit. You did Effie's big gig brunch. You're obviously very supportive of Effie. You're very protective of Alley Cat. Like you didn't like hearing that, that term there. Do you feel like you're as a group part of what you guys do is help kind of push the audience into another gear of like acceptance? And I think that sounds a little maybe, you know, cushy and like soft in a way, but I feel like there is certainly that other side of you guys where you all are, are trying to push for a better wrestling environment as well. Helen, move on out of here. I'm not knocking the mirror over now. My cat's oh, getting it's Alley Cat. It's here. Alley Cat. <laughs> Alley Cat. Well, she heard us <laughs> talking about her. Well, now, see, my, my cat knocked over the beer and she's drinking it because she's insane. Oh. Every time I do one of these, she does this. She loves it. But yes, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, I think it's one of those things where at the core of the group, we're all just good people. Mm -hmm. You know, we ain't going to judge nobody. We ain't going to, you know, we ain't shitheads. So if we see something that we think is bullshit, we're going to say it's bullshit. You know, we, we ain't afraid of, you know, what are you going to do? Take us off a of booking? Who gives a fuck? We'll find another booking. You know what I mean? So yeah, if we, if, yeah, I mean, you guys, I mean, that's the thing is right now, the business needs more leaders, right? I mean, we just saw this big turnover, the speaking out movement out a lot of people. I mean, how has it been for you watching during this time? Also, like the scene change. I mean, people, you know, are no longer or new are no longer a part of this wrestling business anymore. You know, I, I guess at the end of the day, it's one of the things where uh, there ain't as many shows like there's shows running. Now, I'm sure somebody's going to get on here and say, well, yeah, there's a show in fucking insert the name of some town somewhere. But it ain't, there ain't as much shit going down as there was at one point. Yeah. So for me, as it, you hear that? My cat just did a suicide dive off today. She, Helen, you got, well, I'm going to have to get you somewhere to stay when I'm doing these interviews out here. I'm, I apologize. No, it's fine. It's, it adds <laughs> but, uh, to the interview. It's wonderful. I guess uh, at the end of the day, it kind of turns into, there ain't a lot of shit running. So when shit is running, we're kind of, I'm always with my boys. We're always sitting back to your bullshitting. Yeah. I'm one of them people that I try not to get too wrapped up in whatever's going on out there or over here or whatever here, whatever's just going on right here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whatever company I'm working for, whoever I'm with, let's make this the best. Let's make this locker room the best. Let's all of us get a little bit better and keep it going. It's AAW, same thing. At the last show we did out there, me and Justice were sitting back there. It was me, Justice Manders, and we were sitting back there talking to Airwolf and, and a bunch of other people back there. And we all kind of had the same comment to where it, the locker room is fucking awesome. It's yeah. a, the, you know, there's companies change over the years. There's always different people coming in, different things going on, different kind of, kind of a blueprint of what, what we're working towards. And, and right now at AAW, I kind of sit around, I look around and I go, everyone's invested in making the company the best thing we can make it. For sure. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. busting ass. We've got a lot of young people out there, you know, I ain't been wrestling 20 years or nothing. I think I just came up on five, but everyone back there, we're all, you know, uh, looking at the locker room, uh, Jake Christ, he's fucking awesome. He's been around for a long time. Uh, Matthew Justice, that motherfucker was in WWE and one day just decided I won't be here no more, you know, and then he, then he went and did his own thing on the indies, you know, so well, I'm the whole locker room's cool. There's, uh, you know, good energy, people working to try to get each other to the next level. Yeah, and so let's talk about AEW here. Coming up, AEW Alive uh, next Sunday or this Sunday, I guess, depending on we're going to release this interview. Uh, but it's you and Jake something. You're tagging to take on AEW Heritage Champion Hakeem Zayn and Karim here. Uh, how'd this match come together? Tell the fans out there what's the story going into this one. Well, basically, me and Jake Chris went out there and we found everything we could in the building and broke it and tore that motherfucker down. Beat the hell out of each other. I got the W. I hit the pay window. Me and him were out there. He he proceeded to leave the ring, and then uh, Hakeem Zayn came out there with this big old some bitch with him. Yeah, and they got my face, and and I heard the promos, man. I watch everything. I pay attention. You know, Zayn did a promo where he basically said that he, you know, he'd been around before Mansur. He was around old Mansur when I was just breaking in and everything, and that's all true. 
But, you know, at the end of the day, my fucking mailman has known me, you know, longer than he has. So who gives a fuck? You know, you may have known me when I broke in, but that don't mean shit. I'll still whoop your ass. So, you know, he did his promo where he was talking some shit. And then they proceeded to jump on me out there after I was already bloody to beat down. And we fought for about 20 minutes out there breaking all this shit. Jake something ran in there. He cleared house. So now we have an old school tag team match. It's coming up on Halloween time. You know, I'm going to break out some some fucking pumpkins and some shit out there. I'm going to get wild. Oh, yeah. Halloween Havoc style, you know. Or wait, can I say that? Will I get sued for saying Halloween Havoc? Nah, you were, you, were, you were part of, I think you were like, I think you bought the legacy of WCW. I think no, that it's don't. yours now. So don't, don't, don't show Vince Jr., man. He'll get mad at me on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we got a tag team match coming up. Like I said before, you know, that whole locker room is built off of, you know, first match goes on. If, if they bring it, well, we're going to do better. So now imagine when we get to the main event, everybody's bringing it. So, yeah, we go out there and beat the hell out of each other. I'm excited for it. I like when people talk shit. It gives me a reason to punch them harder. So Good. Yeah. No, and by the way, I want to correct myself. It's not Sunday. It's Thursday. Thursday the 20th. Yes, Thursday. Yeah. On Fight TV, I think it's twelve ninety nine. Yes, yes. twelve ninety nine over on Fight TV. And, yeah, this is going to yeah. be a run of shows here for AEW. The two of the shows yes. already sold out. One of them almost sold out, right? So. Yes. Something like that. So, yeah. so yeah, it's going to be good shit out there, man. It's going to be, you know, we're back at it. We're getting some shows in there. It's on Fight TV. I know if you go to IWTV, uh, they got some uh, AAW programs on there as well, some events on there. Y'all can watch, get kind of caught up. And then uh, AAW's got a streaming service as well. So, yeah, we got all kinds of shit going on out there. And I saw in your promo for this, uh, you got a new backstage interviewer there, Kevin Kellum, 101 WKQX. You had really nice things to say about Kell Kellum. You were very nice to him. Well, I, you know, I wasn't as nice as I usually am, but, you know, he held my beer well. He kept it, you know, he, he was there. She, so. Yeah, you said he was doing a great job. I thought it was very nice of you that you said he was doing such a nice job. He seems terrified of you, but that was nice of you to say. That, that's a usual thing, you know. It is what it is. <laughs> um, one other thing I wanted to ask you about here. Um, what's going on with the beer, man? 2021, you're supposed to have a light beer coming out here. What's what's the deal? Is this thing on the way? Who knows, man? We, we shall see. If not, what I'll do is I'll just... Uh, do kind of what I've seen people do before in my family, and I'll just make some shit out here in an old tub, and I'll sell that motherfucker down the road, and then see what happens. Well, Maybe you see me show up at GCW with my own beer. Who knows, man? We'll see what happens. That's the way to do it, man. We home brew. I got my beer stuff down underneath here, my boxes. I got my coils and my my tanks and my my closet over here. I I highly encourage you. If you need any advice or tips or anything, please let me know. I'd love for you to get in the home brew industry. That'd be great, man. We make one of them uh, how to videos you see on like YouTube and some shit. Dude, Spider Nate Webb, man, he's like a gourmet oh. chef. Isn't that weird? I got to get on one of them, man. They're, they're, I was hoping we'd be able to shoot some shit out there for the collective. It did not happen, but I hope at some point we could get on there and make some, you know, some barbecue ribs, you know, drink some beer. He basically just drinks beer the whole time, and I love him. We go to the bars, you know, we get drunk all the time, so just throw us on there, let us cook. Maybe, maybe I get drunk and make a meatloaf on there, you know? Oh, dude. I got a new meatloaf pan the other day. The Bed Bath & Beyond around the corner is going out of business. I got one for like 40% off. It's really nice, man. You know? Anyway. Meatloaf, man. It's, 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 a home, it's a home classic. You make that, get a whole bunch of light beers in you, maybe make a couple of whiskey drinks, whatever you need. Smoke a little something, feel good. Sure. Get some mashed taters, man. You ready to rock and roll. Fall asleep to meatloaf, wake up to biscuits and gravy. <laughs> do a 20-mile jog because you're going to need to. Um, all right, man. So, well, last thing, you're going to be back for MLW the restart. You're going to be around. We're going to catch you over there as well. Uh, we shall see what's going on. Who knows? Old man just kind of shows up and I'll beat the fuck out of people. Gotcha. All right. Well, man, so, uh, anything you want to plug, promote, put over here before we wrap up the interview today? Oh, hell, we got uh, SGC merch. You put that in on Twitter. You got a whole bunch of T-shirts on there. We got masks, T-shirts, fanny packs, all kind of beer. I think beer koozies on there. Uh, Pro Wrestling Tees, Old Master got T-shirts on there. Uh, DoubleHell.com, you go on there. You got Tony Depp in merch. You got Tank Man, Calvin Tank Man. That motherfucker tore up at the collective. Yes. You got Old Master, you got Manders, you got AJ Gray, the motherfucking truth. You got a whole bunch of people on there. You hop on there, buy some T-shirts, support Pro Wrestling, you know. You know, hit us up. Maybe we can do something for y'all. I don't know. I got a cameo. I get on there and I bullshit and do birthday wishes and scare people's kids, make sure they do their homework and whatnot. And we'll see what happens, man. 